Hey guys, welcome back to a new video. If you watched my previous coroutine videos carefully, you know that even if we call delay in a coroutine, it won't actually block the thread it is running in. However, there is a function that will start a coroutine in the main thread and also block it, which is called run blocking. I've seen this function be used in many examples in the web, so you should definitely know what it does and how to use it. So as I said, by simply writing run blocking, we will start a new coroutine in the main thread. However, the difference to global scope dot launch with the main dispatcher, dispatchers dot main, the difference to that is that run blocking will actually block the main thread. This won't. So if we call delay in this function, then we can still use our UI while we are delaying that. But if we use delay in this function, this will actually block our UI updates. And now you might be asking why would I need to block my main thread if I have an option that doesn't block it. That This can be useful if you don't necessarily need that coroutine behavior but still want to call suspend functions in your main thread. So as you can see, we, we block this main thread here so it is actually the same as if we would call this delay function outside of the main thread, but we cannot do this because we're not inside of a coroutine. So if we use run blocking, we can call delay and it is the same with other suspend functions. So if you have a suspend function and just want to call it from your main thread, then you can use run blocking if you don't care about that it is not asynchronous. Another use case of run blocking is for testing with JUnit to actually access suspend function from within a test function. And what I also like the run blocking function for is to just use it to quickly play around with coroutines to figure out how they actually work behind the scenes. So yeah, whatever we write in this run blocking code will be in sync with our normal main thread flow. And to show you how this actually works, let's add some log messages here before that run blocking block logd pass our tag and write before run blocking. Then we can copy that tag, paste it in run blocking before the delay um, started or start off run blocking. Then we can increase the delay a little bit to let's say 5000 milliseconds. Copy that log again, paste it after the delay end of run blocking and paste it once after the one blocking block. And that is after run blocking. So if we now run our app and take a look at Logcat, then you can see it prints before run blocking and immediately after that start of run blocking, then it sleeps for five seconds and then it prints end of run blocking and after run blocking. So that is actually the exact same if we would take that code, move it out of run blocking and replace that delay with thread.sleep. So if we now run it again and take a look at Logcat, you will see the exact same result. It will print those first lines, those first two lines first, and then it sleeps for five seconds and then it prints the other two lines. But the difference is that we can actually call suspend functions inside this one blocking block. And you can also see that it refers to a coroutine scope here, which is actually the reason why we can call suspend functions in there. And that also means that we can start a new coroutine just by writing launch in this block. So we can just write launch here and this launch is a new coroutine. So we don't need the global scope anymore because we are already inside of a coroutine scope, which is this coroutine scope that comes with a run blocking block. And this coroutine we launched here will actually run asynchronously to this um, coroutine launched in the main thread. So it won't be blocked. To demonstrate that to you, let's actually launch it in the IO dispatcher. So dispatchers.io, delay it for, let's say 3000 milliseconds and then print a log here. Oops, not the whole log here, of course. And just print finished IO coroutine one. Then we can copy that whole block 
paste it below and print finished IO coroutine 2. And I do that to demonstrate you that even though we have two delays here in the same dispatcher, that they won't add up so that those two lines will actually be executed at the same time. So it is not the case that this line will be printed after three seconds and this line after six seconds, because that would be the case if the IO thread would also be blocked, but it is not the case, which we'll see if we run that app. Take a look in Logcat. You can see it still prints before run blocking and start of run blocking. And after three seconds, both IO coroutines finished at the same time. And then our main thread coroutine finished. So that just as a little demonstration that you can actually launch new coroutines in the run blocking function that won't get blocked. So run blocking will always only affect the main thread. If you found this video helpful to understand the run blocking function, then please let me know in the comments, leave a like. And if you didn't like this video, please also let me know with some constructive feedback that would be really helpful for me to improve on my content. Have a good day. See you in the next video. Bye bye.